Hello everyone. In today's video, we will take discussion ahead about Fresnel's half period zones. In the last video, we calculated two quantities related to wavefronts. First, radius of the zone and another one was area of the zone. So let us have a quick recap of that. If we have n zones, radius of nth zone can be given as root of nb lambda, where b is the distance between the observation point p and pole of the wave o. And area of the zone, which is approximately equal for all the zones, can be given as a pi b lambda. So it is dependent on two quantities, one the distance of observation b and second wavelength of light. Remember this was with regard to when our wavefront is assumed to be completely flat. Now let us look at the equation when we are considering curvature of the wavefront. In the first image we are considering that source is at infinite distance so we are not considering any distance between source and the wavefront. But in this case, we have to consider. So let us consider a source S and observation point P. Again, pole is O. Distance between source and the pole is A. And the distance between pole and the point is B, similar to the first one. So now the modified area equation is A upon A plus B into pi B lambda. Flat surface equation given above is a special case of this equation if we consider A to be infinity. We will talk more about this during problem solving videos. Let us now proceed to resultant amplitude due to entire wavefront. Let's say we have a system of Fresnel's half period zone with number of zones as n and amplitude due to each zone is represented by A subscript n. So first zone is having amplitude A1 now, since we know that each zone is separated by wavelength lambda by 2, hence A2 will be out of phase from A1, that is having the phase difference of pi. Similarly, A3 will be again out of phase, but will be in phase with A1. Also, as we are going towards higher number of zones, obliquity factor is increasing which is reducing the amplitude of the zone. This is exaggerated diagram. In practice, the number of zones is really very large and the amplitude very gradually decreases as the number of zones increases. Similarly, we can go up to a very large number n and if the n is very very large, then amplitude of nth zone a n would be negligibly small. Resultant amplitude at observation point will be because of the combined effect of all the zones in the wavefront. So, if we want to represent capital A as the net or the resultant amplitude due to entire wavefront of n zones, we can write as A equals vector sum of all the zones A1 minus A2 plus A3 minus a4 and so on till a n. Now if nth zone is e1 that would be minus a n and if nth zone is odd it would be plus a n. So we can rewrite that as minus 1 raised to n minus 1 a n. Let us first consider case for odd number of zones. For mathematical simplicity we can write odd number of zones as half that is a1 as a1 by 2 plus a1 by 2 a3 as a3 by 2 plus a3 by 2 and so on. Since number of zones are odd the last term would be a n by 2. Now let us discuss the term inside the bracket. As the number of zones are increasing amplitude is also decreasing. So a2 is smaller than a1, a3 is smaller than a2. But this change is really very gradual and does not happen very rapidly. So roughly we can say that a1 by 2 plus a3 by 2 will cancel out a2. And same process will continue for higher number of zones. And n being odd, we will be left with the last term as 
plus a n by 2. So lastly, we can say that net or resultant amplitude due to entire wavefront can be given by a1 by 2 plus a n by 2 if n is odd. Here, it is important to note that if n is really very large, its amplitude is going to be negligible. In that case, it will simply be a1 by 2. If we try and calculate the same net amplitude if the number of zones are even, then we will get the result as a1 by 2 minus a n by 2. So when it's odd, it's plus a n by 2. When it's even, it is minus a n by 2. If n is really small, then odd number of zones give rise to a bright point and even number of zones give rise to a dark point. If n is really large and let's say tending to infinity, then a n would be approximately close to 0. In that case, we can neglect a n by 2 in both the expression and the net amplitude due to entire wavefront because now n is tending to infinity would become a1 by 2. This result is very interesting because it tells us that amplitude because of entire wavefront is half to that of amplitude created by Fresnel's first half period zone. In lab setup, it is very easy to set up such condition where we can easily change the number of zones and observe maxima and minima with changing number of zones. Experimentally, if we see, if we have a setup where only one zone is exposed, we will get a bright point on the screen. If we change the size of the opening or if we change the distance so that now two zones are accommodated, center would go to dark instead of bright. Again, if we change the size so as to accommodate 3, it will become bright and so on. So, it will alternately keep on becoming bright and dark till the number of zones is very very large. Then, n's amplitude will become negligible and we will be left with what will be equivalent to half due to the first zone. Results of some of the experiments performed in our lab. So, it is very easy to perform this in lab. You can take a small aperture and by changing the distance from the screen, the number of zones can be varied. So this is the result with n equals 11. So 11 being odd, center is bright. And again, when it is changed and set as number of zones being 10, so at as it is now even, the center is going to it is also experimentally very easy to perform. Apparatus required would be a laser, screen, circular aperture of approximately 2 mm diameter and a defocusing lens. So that's it for today's video. Today we talked about resultant amplitude due to entire wavefront and also I showed you some experimental images of Fresnel pattern. In the next video, we will take up some numerical problems based on Fresnel's class of diffraction. Thank you.